a really focused, into it, engaged Ryan Moore down there. That makes me excited. Yep, it sure does. So it's Brandon Munoz, Ryan Moore on the left. Tommy Eeyore, Brandon Moreland on the right. Best three games out of five, just one match. And here we go. Munoz will put it into play, try to brush it through. Yor got a piece of it. it. Rattles through to Munoz on the three rod. He'll shut it up against Moreland. Put that one on goal down the middle. Rebound comes back to Ryan. Ryan Moore. High big pull shot. Just off the corner of the goal. Picked up by Moreland. So my prediction here is, I don't know, yeah. but I can tell you this. Uh -huh. It's going to really come down to a break here and a break there. Yeah, it often does, doesn't it, in matches that seem to be so evenly matched. We see right away Moreland controlling the pace. Yep, slowing it down each time. Yeah. That's the game plan. And oftentimes when a team goes up against Brandon Munoz, that is the game plan. Let's slow it down. Let's take some time. He does clear it. Rebound picked up by Tommy. That was a uh, aggressively walks it. Shot clear. Right. Easy peasy pull kick, but it's still got down there. Takes a lot of time. Try to take it back out to that far side. Blocked by Ryan up into the air and off the two. And this is, this is what I wanted to see. Greg Leo LaGuardia, Kenneth Dale pulled out that final against Hannah Smith and Jay Lai, who are walking away looking pretty unhappy about how that unfolded. No score here in the first game. Open doubles final, or final, big final. That's a lot of finals of the weekend. So I wanted to see. Oh, and Munoz strokes it home to make it 1 nothing. This is the matchup I wanted to see. Tommy, you're shooting on Ryan Moore. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love this defense. Just look at this. Breathe it in, folks. Really acknowledge what it is that you're seeing here. Tommy, you're is excellent at the walk and rollover. Ryan Moore knows how to block it. And we're seeing a repeat of that defense, that post-over defense that he put up against Tony Spradovin two years ago at Worlds. And he opened singles final. Yeah, that was a great match, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. And again, a match played at an incredibly high level, just like this one. I mean, these are high-end elite players on this table. As good as you're going to find right now on the American Tour, with Tony Sprademan absent. And we saw Tommy now 0 for 3, opening up this open doubles final. At least now in this early going, Jim, Moore is in his head. And... You know, we've talked about it. When Ryan Moore is focused back there, he is as good as any goalie in the world, period, bar none, and maybe better than everyone else. Because he can do it, obviously, offensively, but also can be a spectacular defensive player. Nice pickup here by Yor. And he fires that hole to the far side. Went with a quick one, which oftentimes is the remedy for getting blocked by Ryan Moore. So Moore in the school of Bobby Diaz, the defense there often is showing what you want them to not shoot or that you know they're not going to shoot. Yep. And the longer those holes are open, ooh, a very large percentage of players that works against. It continues, the, the holes continue to strength. Yeah. Uh, sh shrink. Right. And that one looks like it went down the middle, might have misexecuted. It looks like Smiles that. at his partner Moreland were tied up at two. But the bottom line though is this, is that even though that's that's the case that Ryan is slowing it down and taking taking his time defensively, the, what makes that so powerful is that, what you just saw there, the offensive pressure that Munoz is going to put on the other team. Yeah. Boy, Those two a, things combined, whew, what a super team. And, and we haven't even talked about Ryan's two yet. Nope. And a timeout called here by you, your junior in Moreland. Hmm. There's a perfume in the air, Jim. There is? I wouldn't call it a perfume. You did, you, you did call it perfume. An odor. How about that? Mm -hmm. Not sure what you're alluding to, and I'm not sure I want to. This is a burrito behind me. 3-2 two, two lead here in this first game for Brandon Munoz and Ryan Moore as Tommy Yor puts it into play, trying to take it along the outside wall, blocked by Munoz, and then Yor can hold on to the second effort. Everybody out there in Twitch, what's your predictions here? Just out of curiosity... It's a three out of five set only. That's it. Who wins and how many games? 
Munoz trying to bring that one back to the near side. Might have been trying to go down the middle. Rebound comes back to Moore. Ryan has yet to score from back here, but you know it's a matter of time, and oftentimes that's situational. He'll hit the closers. He'll put that final point in. Kind of fortunate to get that one through. Picked up here on the five by Yor. And Tommy couldn't connect. And there isn't a whole lot of time. You know, internationally, they're accustomed to playing just one three out of five. And that, that most of the time is plenty. But sometimes in a final, the teams need that second set in order to find themselves. Mm -hmm. But really, three out of five should be plenty for that. Here's your walking it, trying to bring it near side. Ryan predicted it, made the block. The gun picked up again by Tommy. And again, Tommy's not looked real good on the five so far. A couple of drop passes, a mis-execution there. Munoz has it blocked and saved beautifully by Moreland. Forex. Sends that one up the table to his partner, Yor. 4X9 wants what we all want. Unbiased in this moment. 8-7 in the last game. Although, Football Sports Network says this event goes to 11 in overtime? Yeah. This one goes to 11 in overtime? No kidding. Cool. Well, I want that. 11-10. Again, totally unbiased, but I want that. Oh, the shot on goal again by Ryan. Blocked by Moreland. All right, so we would go all the way to 11. That, that's what we want. We want 11-10. And the timeout called by Tommy. Table management. We saw Tommy do that in the open singles final. Continues to do it here. Yeah, Moreland's done a nice job these last couple of possessions by Munoz. Also blocked a big-time pull shot for Brian. Keep his team in this first game. They're down 3-2. Tommy has possession on the three-rod. He'll return to the table and look to even it up here momentarily. And it's going to be Brandon Moreland stepping up to shoot the ball. And he's very good in these type of situations. He is good for coming into the forward position and going one for one. Let's mm -hmm. see what happens here. He'll set up the pull shot against Ryan. Standard defense. And that long pull shot went just wide. That was selective racing, right? That was yes. a little, yeah, I love that. What a great defense. A little anticipation race. I like selective race. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that one down mm -hmm. and use it in the future. And that one off the outside wall, threatening with that open hand pull kick. I'm not sure if he's trying to turn that into a bank. That was a bank attempt. It was on a bank that attempt. last one. Yeah, that pull shot down the middle, picked up on the five by Moreland. And again, Brandon Moreland, outstanding forward as well. Not much question about him going ahead and trying to pass and score here. Though he is not able to execute the pass here. And a little bit of difficulty with the ball. Setting up that pass. Here's Going your. Going really Tommy up the outside wall. Back around and in. It's 4-2. Break there from Munoz and Moore. Tommy still having some difficulty connecting 5-3. to three. able to keep it out. Beautiful. He is so good back there. Ryan's shot on goal by Moore. You watch Ryan hold the two bar, especially when he's setting up a full shot position. He, he fans his fingers. He fans his fingers and he fans his fingers. You would think that'd be a tell for most people, but for whatever reason it's not, because he he's not going to be shooting when his fingers are open. And Brandon Munoz to that far side closes out game number one. Strong opening game performance from the super team of Brandon Munoz and Ryan Moore. They lead one game to nothing. And it's really coming down to Ryan's defense. And the, that switch is great, but Ryan's defense blocking Tommy Yor. Yeah, at this stage, Tommy's going to have to make the adjustments. He's going to have to tighten things up a little bit. The, the passing has been a, a little off for Tommy so far. Shot selection is going to have to improve, although really you got to credit Ryan's defense more than anything with keeping Tommy out of the goal. Game two underway, Tommy Yor. 
And not able to connect. Ryan has put, I think, three shots on goal so far in the match, which means he's due. Please do. Another one on goal. So many options back there. You really have to rely on your, your goalie, in this case, Brandon Moreland, to make some of those blocks. And a nice pass here. Moreland to your. Tommy trying to bring it back to that near side. And Ryan takes it away. He's bringing that post over. He's bringing all the way over on the pull side. Or push side. Tommy takes advantage of a top ball by Munoz to get another possession. And wide of the goal with that shot effort. Holt might have been there. Munoz able to brush it down. Quick shot at him, blocked by Moreland. Comes back to Brandon. Brandon Munoz. And again, Moreland is there. Boy, we're seeing some high-end defense in this match. Yeah. Kind of what you would expect. As good as Munoz and Yor are. Moore and Moreland. Okay, this is... I, I don't want to... <laughs> can we just call them one, two, three, and four or something? <laughs> or A1, I don't know. Anyways... Moreland and Moore's defense is stellar. World class. Yep. Global. Galaxy class. Mm -hmm. No score, second game. One game to nothing lead from Munoz and Moore. And Ryan couldn't contain that one, which leads to a possession on the three rod for Tommy Orr. Ryan really trying <laughs> to show him that near side, and he takes it away in just the nick of time. And that again, the block. What a fascinating two uh, two blocks in a row. That fast scoop back out and then just being there, not even moving for the push side. It's just amazing. Well, Ryan is showing you why he is. His A game, his A goal A game is the, is the best in the world. Picked up again here by Yor. Huge middles, all by design, because he knows. And he is able to find that far side of the goal to make it one nothing. A battle here on table number one. Moreland. Again, just looking to feed your, but it's intercepted and taken away by Munoz, who fires it home far side to make it 1 1. And your lucky to get this one. Looking for two in a row, but there's more to get in the way again. You just get the sense that, you know, as potent offensively as Tommy York can be, he's not going to be allowed to go on any streaks. Ryan is going to get a piece of it. Mm -hmm. Which means that Tommy just needs a lot of possession. That's a great block there as Tommy went down the middle, but then Ryan turns it over, and Tommy is going to use another timeout here. Tommy or sitting in the stand staring at his son, hoping his son will come over and ask him for advice. Yeah, look at him. That is a laser visit vision. I don't want to look at him. Either. Cyclops over there. Terry Rude just made eye contact with me and just shook. Just nodded his head like this is good stuff. This is. This is some elite level stuff. I mean, this is just so amazing. It's such a pleasure to get to watch this. And Tommy will put the ball back into play. Another block here by Ryan. Again, pounding it up the table. It remains 1-1 here in the second. And that's the scary thing. I mean, he's he's, he's doing great, obvi obviously, uh, defensively. But you add a shot or two in there, which he's more than capable of doing, then it becomes just yeah. frightening, lights out, scary. And, and, and Tommy Orr has, has out-possessioned Brandon Munoz about 2-1 to one so mm -hmm. far. He's getting the chances. But getting through the great Ryan Moore is another matter. Yeah, that one zigzags up the table and in for Moreland. Well, when you think about it, you stop and think about it. 
When Ryan Moore has dedicated himself to playing the goalie position for a top forward, does he ever lose a tournament? You talk, you think about with Greg right. Robertson, where he played goalie. It doesn't happen often. He no. is that impactful from that goalie position. And Munoz able to find the hole against Moreland. It's two two. Foosman ninety five asks: Is the dead bar pull side two unreliable, or is Ryan compressing the bumper, or doing something else that keeps Tommy from shooting it? Tommy must have that shot, right? Yeah, he would think so. And maybe even a quick set one would be good. Let's see. And I don't think his game plan is being in there hitting dead bars. I think there's a lot more going on than just trying to hit dead bars here. Yeah, and, and hitting dead dead bars consistently for anyone. Is, yeah. You know, in it's practice, not... you'll see a guy hit four or five in a row, but during a, a match, during a game, consistently hitting a dead bar is not always that easy. Yeah. This is more not so much about taking away a dead bar pull side, more about just taking away the entirety of an option that you know you can hit consistently and controlling everything else after that. And that's what makes it so exquisite when Moore does this, because it's not just yeah. taking that away in that moment. There's a very long series that we've seen play out in these first two games. 2-2 two -two here in the second, and second timeout called here by Yor and Moreland. And this is when it really slows down. It's like the last 30 seconds of a Super Bowl game, usually. <laughs> In the second game, 2-2, these kind of players are sitting there talking about it and just trying to figure out. Yeah, Ryan Moore not only blocking at about 80% plus, but has also put five or six shots on goal. Yet to score, but it'll happen. And yeah. Again, you're putting shots on goal, you're doing your job. And the question is this, what, what makes Tommy so powerful is his ability to get on a roll once he gets going and feeling it. But that's what makes Ryan so powerful, too, is, is that... It doesn't allow for that. It doesn't allow for that. Yeah. So it's an unstoppable force, a movable object, etc., yeah. etc. Et and Moreland, though, with a second year, as he tucks that one in. He's had two of the three here in this second game. And there's your X factor. The offensive two-bar of Moreland versus the offensive two-bar of Moore. And they can do wonders oftentimes for your forward's confidence. And there's Tommy coming back, tic-tacking through that far lane. We'll set it up here. Take his time. Try to come back down the middle. Ryan giving up the far side, but took away the middle. And sends that one off the inside wall, off a of ban and in. A break there from Munoz and Moore, equalizing the one that, uh, that Jorn Moreland had a, a couple of balls ago. Another shot on goal for Ryan. UK Fooster says, all Tommy is seeing right now is eight yellow goalies in the way. <laughs> is that metric? <laughs> Rob, that's metric. They don't do they don't do metric in the UK. Oh yeah, you're, they're imperial there. Yeah. Well, never mind. Yeah, I'll save that insult for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Someone from the continent again. He tried to bring it to that near side and sprayed it wide. So maybe the confidence in that deep near corner snake shot is not there for Tommy. And stolen away here by Munoz. Boy, when your goalie is blocking like this and putting shots on goal, it takes a lot of pressure off you. And in this case, Brandon Munoz just kind of has to do his job, shoot 40, 50 percent, get a few possessions. Doesn't need to out possession, Tommy. For the lead, Munoz. We'll call timeout. Mm. I'd like to thank everybody out there in Twitch land, chatting, mm -hmm. asking questions, joining us this Monday. Where is Twitch evening. land? Which, which continent? It's the ninth one. Ninth one. No, we're right past the eighth one. Metric or Imperial? Neither. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, they actually use the... <laughs> <laughs> you got nowhere to go, buddy. Give me a second. <laughs> Brad is hovering over me, and it scares me. <laughs> I got somewhere. Here we go. Munoz will put the ball back into play. Tied up at three here in the second game. Yeah. And stroke it home near side. Not right. But... Or three. Here's Tommy. And he fires it home far side to make it 4-4. Big ball here for Joran Moreland in particular. But Munoz mm. able to go through the lane. And Munoz now versus Munoz just a year ago in that moment. Looking for a two games to nothing yeah. lead and fight. 
grinding it as Munoz strokes it home. Brandon Munoz, Ryan Moore have come out to claim the first two games of this Open Doubles Final. Tommy Yor, Brandon Moreland trying to find a remedy. You say what you will, that was a strong performance by Munoz, but it is Ryan Moore who is dictating what's going on on this table right now. Yeah, you know, I'll, uh, just to finish the point, like just seeing that kind of level of, of discipline, that five bar, slowing it down, not doing a five bar shot, just getting to those three to close. A closing Brandon Munoz, yeah, that's that's an interesting thing to see going forward as as, as our the, the vacuum slowly gets uh, filled. It, it, it makes you wonder whether or not this could become a regular pairing with Brandon Munoz and Ryan Moore, and if it is, um, how dominant they could be potentially right. on the American Tour. This is an incredible team on paper and obviously on the table as well. All right, I mean this is a fascinating world's team. Munoz and Moore leading two games to nothing. We get game number three underway, and Tommy bounces off the wall, goes back to the wall. He'll have the first possession of game number three as he sets it up against Ryan. Try to come back down the middle. Now, if you're if you're Tommy Yor, and that, that's Ryan Moore back there, and again, we've talked about how Ryan Moore really uses the Bob Diaz approach, which is a language, right? The defense is a language. It is sending you messages. It is giving you information to, to fool you, right? Or it is, it is simply speaking to you. And I know that's that, it, that's kind of difficult to kind of envision what that is. But if you're Tommy Yor, do you maybe take the approach where you completely ignore what the defender is doing mm. and then use random times and select certain shots? And right now, it is all Brandon Munoz and Ryan Moore. They're up to nothing here in the third. I mean, you're going to fall into the traps of a Bobby Diaz or a Ryan Moore. So right. just almost, yep, just... Take your time, pick something, shoot it aggressively. And you're not giving information back to Ryan. So something to, something to think about. And it's a question, a rhetorical one. You don't need to answer unless you want to. It's a good one, though. I like it. I, I like that concept. <clears throat> and I think that's, that really speaks to why defense is one of the last things people learn how to do. Defensively at goal, defensively on the five, because you're talking about a language. You are talking about painting a picture. You're talking about any, you know, those kind of analogies. You're not just trying to score. You're trying to stop your, somebody from scoring. It's not really, you do manipulate the, the opposing forward with mm -hmm. your defense. And, and Bobby Diaz was the best ever at that, but Ryan Moore pretty darn good at it as well. And this is Tommy, your defending Munoz. Gets a block on the first one. Rebound comes back to Brandon, who resets. Takes another look. Shot attempt. That one's going to spin to Moreland. We'll brush it through. And it's going to shoot the pull shot. Straight middle long. Long blocked by Ryan. And that one off a man off the outside wall and in. It's 3 1. Kind of a runaway train at this point, Jim. Yeah. If anybody can turn it around, it's this young man here. But again, Ooh, but there's Ryan up into the air and <clears throat> off the table. Ryan is living rent-free in Tommy's head right now. <laughs> there's nothing mm -hmm. There's nothing more to say. And Brandon has just been... Well, off the inside wall towards the goal, kept out by Moreland. Yeah, uh, Brandon Lutus has been fine. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a good match. Yeah. But the MVP of this match, without... It, Scoring a clean shot in the entire match, by the way, is Ryan Moore. Obviously, there's still a little bit of room there, but I just, I don't, I don't know. And pass attempt. Grabbed by Munoz on the five. Yes! And a left hook. Championship point for Munoz and Moore. Mm. A clinic in yeah. defense. But again, we've seen Ryan use this defense, and Ryan closes the deal with his only clean score of the match, as he so often does. And your 2023 Texas State Open doubles champions are the super team of Brendan Munoz and Ryan Moore. I...
will just say that I want to A, look yeah. forward to seeing these two play again as much as possible throughout the rest of this season. Yeah. And B, any player out there that wants to understand defense, watch what Ryan did throughout this, but look at it backwards. Don't think of it in a linear th progression. Think of what you just saw at the end right now and backtrack as yeah. he was doing everything he was doing to this point. Mm. Don't look at the other way around. And if we recall as well, remember the in, in the open singles final, Ryan Moore was sitting up there in the stands at the end of the table. No. Just bringing himself up to date on what Tommy was doing, and he formulated a game plan, and what a game plan it was. Yeah. As his defense certainly was the yep. major factor behind that victory. And if you want to understand greatness, Jim, if you want to really understand what Ryan was doing in that level, that granular level, as Mark Torres likes to say, go watch the movie Dead Poet Society and that famous scene where he's telling them all 